Well, well, certainly the, the summit wouldn't have given uh, people more confidence in, in the EU and, and the UK reaching a deal. So it is more likely that no deal will result and it would result from, from mutual kind of misunderstandings or misjudgments of, of positions. So yeah. I, I think the EU, there is still a, a, a feeling amongst many leaders that Brexit could be somehow reversed and that's why Theresa May was right to stress that it is going to happen. But on the UK side, I think those who believe that the EU would, would accommodate UK demands more willingly uh, yeah. were also proven uh, uh, wrong. So I think, I still believe there will be a deal. I doubt that that deal will be negotiated by Theresa May because she invested so much political capital in, in Checker's plan that, that is yeah. completely in, in tatters. It has no support in her party, no support amongst the EU partners. So she was really exposed as, as a very weak leader. So the, the substance of the summit didn't surprise me, but the form uh, was, was surprising. The, the, the ferocity of the attack on, on Theresa May uh, was surprising. Yes, yeah, Stefan, I'm glad you brought that up because I have to wonder whether or not the EU leaders are being honest brokers here because going into the Salzburg meeting, it seemed as though that many, including Michel Barnier, were ready to get on board with the Chequers plan, with the exception of this disagreement over the Northern Ireland border. We heard from Jean-Claude Juncker before that meeting yesterday really kicked off saying that Theresa May's presentation the evening before was a delight. And then all of a sudden everything changes. And it was Donald Tusk who seemed to say that they don't want any risks to the single market's reputation. But have they been somewhat backpedaling here? Uh, I'm not quite sure. I mean, people would, would point out that the EU uh, and its position has been consistent. There was always distinct unease about unpicking the aspects of the, of the uh, uh, single market. So in that way, I, I, I don't know whether that was all that surprising. As I said, I think more the, the form was surprising because it, the, the undiplomatic language that Macron used, mm. I don't think it's going to help anyone. So I can only understand that kind of frontal attack uh, from the position of some kind of uh, assumption that Brexit could still be reversed. I mean, there is a talk, uh, unusually undiplomatic talk by other EU leaders about uh, uh, the possibility of another referendum in the UK, which to my mind is a non-starter and wouldn't help anyone. So in that way, yeah. a no-deal uh, scenario is possible simply by this mutual misunderstanding. But then the other interesting question would be, if a no-deal occurs, what does it mean? How, how acrimonious that separation would be because yeah. even in the case of a no deal i cannot imagine that they would not reach some kind of pragmatic pragmatic adjustments uh, to to smooth uh, the exit and once that starts happening then a pragmatic deal uh, uh, would be reached after yeah. all so i remain optimistic moderately optimistic about the possibility of the deal but i also remain skeptical about theresa may having enough political support and frankly the ability uh, to deliver that deal Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.